we're going to be looking at the behaviour of springs. A material obeys Hooke's law if its extension is directly proportional to the force applied, provided that the elastic limit has not been reached. A material is elastic if, after removing the applied force, the material returns back to its original length or shape. So beyond the elastic limit, it's, it's the force beyond which, removing the force, the material will not return back to its original length or shape. Directly proportional means that they increase by the same ratio. So here we have a spring where no force is added. So it has a length L, original length L. When you add a mass, the spring extends. So the extension is E. So it's the new length minus the original length. If we were to double the mass, the force we apply to the spring, because extension is directly proportional to the force applied, they increase by the same ratio. So by doubling the force, we'll double the extension. If we have th apply three times the mass to the spring, so three times the force, as they increase by the same ratio, we'll have three times the extension. So horizontally, we're increasing the force. And vertically, you can see we get an increase in the extension. And you can see if we were to plot a graph of force against extension, we'll get a straight line through the origin. So a feature of directly proportional relationship would be a straight line through the origin. For zero force, you would have zero extension. For force F, you'd have an extension E. And if you double the force, so you have 2F, you would double the extension and have 2E. These three points are giving you a straight line through the origin, showing you hence the directly proportional relationship. We can express Hooke's law mathematically as this. To get into equation, we would need a proportionality constant, and that is the force constant. So Hooke's law becomes the force applied equals the force constant. It's also known as the spring constant times by the extension. From this equation, we can define the force constant. So our force constant is equal to the force applied per unit extension. The units of force constant is given by this equation. So it would be the units of force, which is newtons divided by the units of extension, which is metres, so it's newton per metre. The force constant is found from the gradient of a force extension graph, and that's because if you have a straight line through the origin, the equation of that line is y equals mx. And our y is representing the force, f. Our x is our extension, e. And so whatever we have in front of the x is our gradient. So our gradient is the force constant. If we consider a spring which has a force applied to it of 2 newtons and it has an extension of 4 centimetres, then we can say the force constant of that spring will be the 2 newtons divided by the 4 centimetres, which will be 0.5 newtons per centimetre.
and what that means is for every centimeter extension we would need to apply a force of 0.5 newtons If we now consider a spring where we've applied 3 newton force and we have an extension of 4 centimetres, the force constant for this spring will be 3 newtons divided by 4 centimetres, so that will be 0.75 newton per centimetre. So this is showing you that for every centimetre extension, we would need a force of 0.75 newtons. So force constant is a measure of the stiffness of a material. And so looking at these two springs, you can see the spring which has the larger value of force constant needs a greater force to get the same extension. So it has the greater stiffness. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored in a deformed material, so a material that has changed shape. So it's the work done by a deforming force, a force that either stretches or compresses a material. It is found from the area under a force extension graph. So if the material obeys Hooke's law, then we know the force extension graph will be a straight line through the origin. So to get the area under this graph, we're looking at the area of a triangle. So that will be a half times the base, which is the extension, times the height, which is the force. So the elastic potential energy it's also known as elastic strain energy, will equal half Fe. And because the material obeys Hooke's law, we know the force is equal to the force constant times extension. So if we substitute for force into this equation, we'll get half Ke times E. That will give you a half Ke squared. As K is a constant for a given spring, we can see then that the elastic potential energy or the strain energy is directly proportional to the extension squared. That means if you were to double the extension, you would have 2 squared, so that is 4 times the elastic potential energy. If you had 3 times the extension, you would have 3 squared, so that is 9 times the elastic potential energy.